Hey, everyone. So I wanted to let you know that I'm going to start answering the questions you all are sending me via email on the Suzanne Banker show in the form of bonus episodes. The two best ways to contact me for those who don't know are direct email at Suzanne at the Suzanne Banker show.com. Or you can always go to my site, Suzanne And there's a form there under the contact heading. Either way is fine. I also wanted to add that these questions are going to be anonymous. I hear from people all over the country, actually all over the world, which is super awesome, but mostly in the U.S. And I used to use first names only and then say where people were from when I would read their questions and answer them here. But I've decided to make it even more anonymous than that so people feel free to reach out. I've also begun collecting responses from listeners, from email subscribers, and even former coaching clients to the question, what is your biggest relationship frustration? And I started collecting the answers to that question. And when I realized how many people that I've heard from, both in answering that question directly, but also over the years through the intake form of coaching, where you fill out, you know, a bunch of information and that question is on there. I realized that I have a gold mine of information that can help other people. So I'm going to be reading from these answers and trying to help as best as I can in a more public way. There's just so much that I've seen over the years that can be helpful to so many more people. And I feel like I'm wasting, um, too much gets wasted by not bringing this to the forefront. So I'm going to start today by answering just a handful of emails. Um, these are not, these particular emails are not, um, the answer to that question. What is your biggest relationship frustration? It's, um, well, some of them are take that back. And some of them are just straight emails. Anyway. Hi, Suzanne. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to go through the names and, uh, she's 25 years old. She met her boyfriend on a dating app. They've been together for almost a year. We do love each other, but we come from very different backgrounds. We talk about marriage a lot, but to be honest, I don't know if I should spend the rest of my life with him. The main reason is because of his income and job. He does not have a high earning job, which I see as an indication of an unstable future. He makes around 60 K on the other hand, I have my master's degree and I'm guaranteed a stable job prospect. I want to be a stay-at-home mother and homeschool my kids. As much as I love him, I need a man who can support and provide for me. He knows that and has reassured me he would. What should I do? Should I leave him and find a more financially stable man? Why should I leave him and find a more financially stable man? But I'm unsure if I will meet someone as kind and loving as he is. So, two things stand out with this. One is the fact that she has higher degrees and then also claims she wants to be a stay at home mom and then even homeschool, which is even putting you at home longer and for more time. That's all fine. There's nothing wrong with having higher education, um, even a master's degree and staying home. I support that, but it's glaring how those two things don't don't work in tandem in the way they would for a man. The average guy who's going to have a master's degree is going to be the earner, right? And it's okay for a woman to say this and want this in a way that it's not for a man. But that has to be ironed out and understood clearly, which it sounds like it is, prior to getting married, so that the guy doesn't think, well, because she got these higher degrees, she's going to be an earner. The fact that he makes 60K doesn't alarm me if you haven't even gotten married and have any children. So I don't know exactly, I would need more information for this. But if you're just in the dating stage, and you're not yet married, there's nothing wrong with a $60,000 a year salary. So 
if you're talking about the fact that I don't, I don't know what he does. I mean, I'm assuming there's a trajectory there and there's a ladder that he's going to be climbing over the years, in which case, no, you don't dump him because he makes $60,000 a year. There's nothing wrong with $60,000 a year. Now, is that where he's going to tap out? Is he a cop or a teacher or something to that effect? And you're concerned in that respect? Sure. That's fair. And that requires a conversation about what you want the future to look like. And there's nothing wrong with what, what he wants it to look like and what you want it to look like. It just has to match. There's too many variables here that I don't have. There are too many variables here that I don't have in this question to be able to answer any more specifically than that. That's all I can really say is that I don't see any alarm in that salary if he's um, on, a, on, a, on a path of some sort. But I don't know enough about his um, career. But it sounds like he's confident about it. So I don't know where the concern really comes from with that number. And it starts to make me wonder about, you know, the inflated ideas and expectations of the younger set in terms of what is needed to get married or to have a family. I mean, you do not need to make $500,000 to have children and stay home with them. So, um, yeah, just really interesting at these, to look at these numbers in that way. I mean, my husband made significantly less than he makes today when I met him, but I mean, obviously, everybody does when you're starting out, but you just assume it's not going to stay that way. Um, I don't know what there would be a, a concern that you didn't lay out there, um, you know, that, that would make you think he wouldn't be making more over time. Okay, uh, another one. Hi, Suzanne, my name. Oh, I'm not doing names. Uh, big fan of your show. Read your book, How to Get Hitched and Stay Hitched. I'm 21 and will graduate college soon. I want to pick a line of work that makes sense for me and not be on the career woman girl boss path. I've thought about traditionally female careers like teacher or therapist, but those both require graduate school, which I'd rather avoid for a lot of reasons. What specific job paths would you recommend for girl women in my position? I'm going to call her a woman. She said girls. If you're in your 20s, you're a woman. Um, especially jobs that would. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, yeah. A lot of them. First of all, there's nothing wrong with traditionally female paths. There was a reason that women took them and still do, by the way, at far greater rates than men, but always have chosen them for the obvious reason, because they work very well around having children, things like nursing and teaching. And you, you know, the modern generation has been fed a lie that, that the only reason that women did that is because they had no other doors open to them and we had to level that playing field and get women out of those fields and yada, yada, yada. But there is a perfectly practical reason why people went into those, women went into those, and um, they're still just as good today as they were then. So yeah, nursing, teaching, consulting, um, writing, editing, publishing, tutoring, owning a business that you can do from home on your own time, starting a cooking blog turning any kind of hobby into a profession that you can do from home is, is, a, is another kind of no brainer. So yeah, I think there's, there's the traditional path that is perfectly fine and still there, but there's also this huge um, array of new jobs and new paths that women can take today that were not an option, even when I was doing it. Um, but certainly when our, when our mothers were. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, hi, Suzanne. I've been listening to your podcast. I'm a 27 years year old woman, and I'm trying to navigate the dating world. I've been I've been dating a guy for three months who has everything one would need in a long-term partner. He's kind, has a stable job, good relationship with his family, hardworking, loyal, wants to be a dad. The thing is, I am not in love. I didn't experience this honeymoon period at all. I know it's not supposed to last, but is it okay if it was never there in the first place? I started dating him more based on logic, hoping this stuff would come later. But there is still nothing, and the idea of sex doesn't appeal to me very much. So my question is, is it enough if there are the same values for life, but none of the falling in love and attraction feeling? So I just want to say that you know, 30 years ago, this would never even be asked. There is so much going on 
that's just a mess in the dating world today that people are so desperate they're having to look at they're having to entertain in the way this gal is someone to whom they're not attracted and just looking at all the other practical aspects of it and thinking that that might be enough so there are some people who would say uh, that attraction comes in time that you w- that those all those qualities that she described and the experience of that will cause you to fall in love with the person and feel sexually attracted to them. And I am not going to sit here and say that's not possible because I don't know. I will take people's word for it if they've experienced that. I never went that route and I wouldn't personally want to gamble on it just because I wouldn't know. So to me in my brain dating has to include attraction, which is why I referred back to that program, Love is Blind, that I find so entertaining in so many ways. But the one thing that I think is silly about it is that you're supposed to fall in love with this person without seeing them. And I just think that's unrealistic. Um, you, you have to know if you have chemistry with someone. If chemistry is a part of a relationship. If it's not there, yes, it may come, but you're never going to know. So typically speaking, I would say that's not a that's not a keeper. That's not a match. Um, you have really, I think I've mentioned this before. I've talked about this before. Chemistry, compatibility, communication, and commitment. Those are the four C's. And I I really feel that you have to have all four of those in place. And the one that's going to struggle that most people struggle with, we all do when we've been married a long time, is the communication one. But if you're talking about just dating, you're really honing in at that point on compatibility, chemistry, and commitment. And of course, communication as well. It's just that that communication piece is going to evolve and change and it starts out easier and becomes really difficult. And then you work through it. And I mean, hopefully you do. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. I would not want to gamble on that, but um, there are people who would give you a different answer. So take that as you wish. Hi, Suzanne. Um, I'm almost 34 um, we married at 30, I've married at 32 and we've been trying for a baby, but while well, for a while now, but still no luck. Um, I don't want to go through all this, uh, cause it's a long one. Um, basically she had re- very religious parents and she made an excellent observation. I'm starting to think parents need to train their children to be good spouses and even teach their children what to look for in a spouse, how to date, et cetera, et cetera. I could not agree more. And I hope that my husband and I did that with our kids. We tried to. Um, I mean, we still talk about it. Um, and I don't think people do. So I, I would agree with that. But she she grew up Lutheran, she said. Um, uh, but she was, she said, uh, uh, your uh, your advice, I follow, try to follow your advice, even though it's painful, because I think the feminist message took a very different tone in my religious community. And I'm trying to chart a different life for my future, my own kids. I'm wondering what your religious background is with what you're saying, because my relationship with my mother and father was one where they told me children were beneath me not to have them and that I would be a bad mother. Oh, that's so awful. These labels actually made me struggle with dating a lot. Well, yeah, who wouldn't? And the damage is still there. I want to be a different kind of mother to my kids in my religious tradition. It's very important to obey your parents. And I did that, but now it's a mess. Yada, yada. Okay. So as far as your question about my religious, my religious background is really interesting because my mother was Catholic growing up and she left it. And when she was 23 and never went back to much to her friend's dismay, all of her friends were Catholic. They were always trying to get her to come back. She used to say, um, to Catholicism, but she didn't, um, mostly because she's an extraordinarily independent thinker and, because she had trouble, she was very literal. And so she had trouble with even the concept of faith. Um, she, yeah. Anyway, that, that's not what this is about. So, she, but needless to say, I gleaned a lot of, um, she, she, she retained a lot of what she grew up with and passed that on to me, whether she meant to or not. And then I also went to Catholic school. So it's true that and all my friends are Catholic. My husband's Catholic. <laughs> we raised our kids Catholic. Um, I never actually converted, 
but I definitely have a Catholic mind. There's just no question about that. Um, and it's the, you know, I've gone to mass. I mean, mass is what I know much more so than church services. Um, so it frames for sure. It frames my thinking, no question about it. Um, but what's interesting is that that same mother that I just described, um, was despite being, um, a career woman in her day, she didn't actually quit to come home with my sister and me until we were, uh, five and three. Um, I got the different, I got a completely different message far from children being beneath me. It was quite the opposite. It's, it's the greatest thing you'll ever do. I regretted not staying home when you were little and, um, you need a career that is going to work around that because your kids need you. So I, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question exactly. You, you basically, all you said was what's your religious background with what you were saying. So that's all I can really think of to say. And I'm sorry about, you know, the messaging that you got. It's very difficult. Uh, she's not the only person I know who had really more of a boomer mother mentality where they were not into kids and even dissuaded their kids from going that way. And I just think it's terribly sad. I don't, I, I can't even get my head around it. It's so unusual, but I don't know, maybe more common than we think, at least for today's generation. But um, there's the way we were raised to think, and there's the way we need to think to be successful for what we want. And we have to be able to separate those things, no doubt. Okay, and this last one. Um, hi, Suzanne. I'm a 20-year-old woman. I've been dating my boyfriend for just over two years, and I've been living with him since six months into our relationship. Um, she describes why she did that. She left her parents' house because my father was financially and physically abusive, and my mother allowed it. I was very much emerged in the feminist mindset when we first met, and he was already on his journey of becoming a man. Um, he has introduced me into logic and living traditionally, mainly through Jordan Peterson and discussions on philosophical topics. I recently got your book, The Alpha Female's Guide to Men and Marriage. I've been trying to apply these concepts. However, I made countless large mistakes before I took the responsibility of learning for myself. My boyfriend is unlike the men you describe in your book, as he will fight with me over allowing subtle disrespect to be brushed off. He's given me many ultimatums to act the way I've learned is correct or leave. And in many ways I have grown into a whole new person, but I keep slipping back into old patterns. Listen, that's not, that is not a healthy relationship. I have, I, a byproduct of what I do in helping women be better wives is that I occasionally will run across husbands who take that and run with it. Um, but it's very unusual, but this would be an example of it where these guys who are spending all this time on YouTube and absor getting absorbed in what they think a woman is supposed to be like, and then coming home and sort of giving ultimatums and telling her, you know, their wife, how it's going to be or how it should be. That is not normal. That is not the way it's supposed to be. That it is, um, I'd be very concerned. I'd be very concerned. Most men, if they see you are trying, because for whatever reason, you're not, how do I say this differently? Well, especially when you're that young, you're evolving. And if the person is giving you an ultimatum versus just working through how to do this thing together and become better people, it's concerning especially if he is spending a lot of time on YouTube, which it sounds like he is nothing against Jordan Peterson. I fully support following Jordan Peterson, but part and parcel of that is a lot of these other people who are on line who are not good people to follow. And I have been running into that. Um, even on the coaching end where I'm having to say to these guys, get off of YouTube. You know, if you think if there's no way that you're going to look at um, a bunch of disgruntled men telling you what's wrong with women. And then you're going to take that into your relationship and think that's going to work. That is not appropriate. It's not, um, fruitful. It's, it's a no win situation. Stay focused on your relationship that you have and not what other people are telling you about women as a rule. 
And it sounds like that's what this gal is dealing with. So, um, yeah, I'd be on the lookout for that. And, um, not think that you are supposed to become what he wants you to become. There's really nothing more I can say in this forum. I mean, that's, that's a coaching issue. So that's as far as I'm going to go on that. But anyway, um, hope that helps. Um, until next time, I will uh, read more soon in another bonus episode. That's all I got for today. Thanks guys.